clock was somewhere between far too late and far too early. I was sitting in my office, staring out over Center City. The nests of sin were lighting their neon signs. I looked down at the thousands of wild and hungry souls who rushed around on the wet sidewalks looking for shelter from the rain. I needed a drink. I needed a vacation. I needed a home in the country. What I had was a coat, a hat, and a gun. I put them on and went out in the rain. Center City is filled with dreams of gold and tongues of silver, nerves of steel and bullets of lead. It's got a thousand stories, and mine's just one of them. Good evening, and welcome to Nerves of Steel on Gauntlet Hangouts. My name's Kat Raman. Uh, Nerves of Steel is a film noir story game written by Simon Pedersen, a Swedish designer, and he graciously allowed me to help create an English adaptation of it. Uh, we have some wonderful people tonight playing with us, and I think we'll start with uh, Philip. Hey, hey. And uh, also we have Sabine. Or Sabina, I, was, I can't remember which one I was supposed to use. It's Sabine still. Hi. Awesome. Uh, so Nerves of Steel is uh, an interesting game. There are some rather strict rules on talking, which you will notice us uh, have to uh, follow. Um, and we also get to play some music, so that's going to be fun. Um, but the, the main rules are that we have to talk in the first person, and the first person in question is uh, the Nerves of Steel character. Uh, Nerves of Steel tonight will be played by Sabine. Um, the other two roles that are being portrayed tonight will be Silver Tongue. Silver Tongue is meant to be the classic femme fatale. Uh, it doesn't have to be femme, but probably has to be fatale. And the third role that I'll be, uh, Philip will be portraying Silver Tongue tonight, and I will be playing Golden Dreams, who uh, generally is the opposition. They're the person with the dreams of having money, or they might not be a person. They could just be an organization. We're going to find out. So one of the gimmicks of this game is we do not know anything much about where it is at the start. Uh, we're going to let Sabine start, and uh, she will talk us in, and we will see what happens. So... Is everyone ready? Okay, cool. Uh, so Sabine, I invite you to choose one of the tracks. Um, trying to look these over. Um, Night is Falling or The Black Cat are both pretty good, uh, generic, uh, very sultry film noir. Um, the others are also pretty good, though they tend to be a little bit more bouncy, have a slightly more bouncy mood, and so it might be good for like action-y stuff. So. I'm going to let you start that and uh, then start your narration and just keep going until we reach a point where uh, uh, we're ready to uh, all start talking. So great. Okay. So I think, um, well, in honor of our facilitator, I will choose the black cat. That's okay with everyone. Well... It was a sultry night in the streets of Central City. Most people had gone to sleep, some had not. But that man lying behind a dumpster had gone to sleep forever. I was looking him over. That, so that's what had become of Peter Stevenson. Self-made millionaire, huh? Didn't think he would have come to such an end. I took a photograph. Flesh was throwing harsh shadows against the wall, illuminating his slit throat and the multiple gunshot wounds. But there was a letter sticking out of his pocket. I wonder what was in it. Should I take it? Should I leave it for the police? Ah, I would take that. I'm a reporter after all, and I will find out what killed them. And then it will be the story of the century and would make my name.
And I think I would like to finish the scene right here. Is that okay, or should I go on? I'm sorry. No, actually, that's that's a pretty decent intro, I think. So yeah, sure, cool. So, uh, so let's talk. Uh, so the way that we uh, figure out how to do a mystery with zero prep is that at the end of every scene, we're gonna figure out some questions that were raised. Uh, also, I uh, created a cast tab, and so I put a little note. Oh, cool! Somebody, somebody added some stuff there. Thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna say uh, now uh, the way that these questions should be framed is they should be stuff that the audience would be annoyed with and ask for their fifty cents back because this is a movie in the 1940s um, if they didn't get the answer to. So I think first question is who killed Peter Stevenson? Yeah. And I think the other question is, how did he get to be in behind this dumpster? OK, yeah. And even more obvious, what's in that letter? Yeah. What's in the letter? Mm -hmm. And who is it from? And why didn't the murderer take it? All right, cool. Um, let me see the best way to do this. Why don't we, uh, Philip, uh, you want to go next? Uh, so I would now start the scene with uh, our reporter and then uh, expand it to include uh, my character already, or is, can I do a general scene? Well, so the way you do it is you you start your narration from the point of view of Nerves of Steel, mm -hmm. and put Nerves of Steel somewhere. As soon as you're, as soon as uh, there are other people who need to talk in there, um, then Nerves of Steel, in this case Sabine, will take over talking for Nerves of Steel, and then the rest of us uh, can either play care can play other characters in the scene. Uh, since we're only three, you can draft people to play any other characters in the scene. I, I guess I probably will default to some of them at least because um, uh, I, I am the one with the depersonalized army of million, minions. Um, it's important to note that even if it's not your turn, you're more than welcome to narrate details as long as you're not interrupting someone else's narration. Okay. So. And, and do I have to include my... Uh character like the do i have to include the silver tongue in every scene i narrate or doesn't she have to be in there necessarily no you don't have to do that uh, if you wish to introduce a care if you wish to if you have an idea who you want that character to be you can totally uh narrate the scene to set up uh, uh nerves of steel's meeting with uh with silver tongue since we all we know about nerves of steel right now is that they are a reporter yes this So when you are ready, um, you can start playing some music. Uh, just maybe tell me which track you're going to play so that I can keep that track of that. And uh, and uh, so as you can see, one of the functions of playing the music is it's a good way to signal everybody it's time to start a new scene so we can all settle down. Sure. I did not listen to any of the tracks beforehand, so I'm just picking the next one, Night Falling. And... Uh... Uh, lights flashing for photographers their uh, the light of the camera of the cameras reflecting in uh, the puddles of this alleyway uh, Stevenson was a was a common figure on uh, was a common figure in the in the papers, and uh, having his photograph taken was nothing uh, uncommon for him. But nobody had seen him in this position, and I'm sure he would have wanted another way out. Usually, he was accompanied by his wife <laughs> on 
on, on those occasions when uh, whenever he opened a new business venture or uh, attended some high society event events I, I used to attend as well but those days are gone I'm I'm no longer reporting on matters of society I'm doing the crime beat I'm working at night now but this this might be my breakthrough and all those people who have forgotten me will listen for me will listen to me again I wonder what Peterson's wife is doing and I wonder what I can do to get the story before any of my colleagues. Uh, I guess that's the trick, so <laughs> a good point to stop. Um, okay. I mean, you're not obligated to stop uh, when the track ends, mm -hmm. just so you know. It just it just plays out and then you keep going. I probably yeah. should have mentioned that, but that's okay. Uh, sure, we can do monologues. And I guess I'll step up to the plate and try get some dialogue into the game. Uh, do we, uh, do we have new questions after this? Uh, yeah. Slice? Um, I don't know if we have a question, but this whole his widow sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. I'm not sure I want to put a question down because it's pretty. Sh it seems pr it seems like you're driving at that widow maybe being uh, silver tongue, but yeah, yeah, we could all. Another question could be what happened to uh, to Nerves of Steel that he's uh, you know disgraced from being a high society <laughs> reporter guy and now is walking on crime. Yeah, that actually might be just interesting enough. So. I put the Swedish version. <laughs> we still haven't decided whether Nurse Steel is a guy or not, right? That is correct. Cool. And the wife could also be Golden Dream, of course. Wife could be Golden Dreams, couldn't she? Mm -hmm. Well, let's Probably. let's find out. Okay, let me find something here. Uh yeah, okay. Cool. I didn't bother calling my editor. He never had anything useful to say to me. I took it I took initiative like he always asked me to do. The drive up to Stevenson's house brought, brought me back through my old beat. The wealth and the, the, the rich and rotting part of town, dripping in wealth, built high on the poverty of millions. It's a good beat, a cushy life, if you could keep it. The butler just nodded at me as I came in. He remembered me from the old days. He had his hand out, hoping I would slip him a fin, but I just shook my head, staggered on inside. I needed a drink, but I wasn't sure I could afford what they were selling here. But I had a date with Stevenson's widow. Yeah, let's call. So, uh, yeah. So, at this point, if somebody else wants to jump in with the narration, you're totally cool. Uh, if if you want to just grab Nerves of Steel at this point, Sabine, and um, and just have him start talking to people, that's totally cool too. So that's oh, okay. How it's work. As soon as as soon as it's clear that I've stopped talking, and like maybe I'll make a gesture oh, okay. or something like that. Oh, okay. Anybody else is free to jump in whenever you want. So, cool. Okay. Oh. Cool. Okay. Yeah, would love to jump in to this. And uh, so I turned to the butler and said to him, "I have to talk to the missus. Where's she at?" Well, 
The missus is, um... Well, she's a little tight, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but nothing you haven't seen before. Well, does she know that her husband's dead? I don't think she's known where her husband is for quite some time. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I want to talk to her anyway. As you wish, I'll take you to her boudoir. I follow the butler up the stairs to a hallway, ignoring all those riches, the painting that taste as portrait of Stevenson like he was a, like he was a king of old, even that kind of a scepter. It made me nauseous. But, well, to be, tell the truth, maybe that was just the perfume that was wafting through the floor. The butler knocked and opened the door, and there she was. A woman, tall, brunette. Or do you want to describe her, Philip? I don't know. What are the rules here? I'm sorry, I don't either. Well, yes, those are the rules. I mean, you can do it either way. Uh, but yeah, if you if, if you wish to, um, uh, it's perfectly okay for at this point Philip to switch over and say, "I could see her walking over to me. She was tall and brunette." Or if you have a better idea, go ahead. We're working on this, but it's also playing this online is a little bit different. But you know, just yep. making it clear that uh, you're done talking and somebody else can jump in is totally appropriate. So, with that. She was, yeah, she was tall and brunette, dressed in, dressed in silks, maybe something Asian. <laughs> and they were loose fit. <laughs> they, they were fitting her life's body in a loose way something not every woman would uh, invite visitors while wearing her she <clears throat> sorry, sorry she her her her, uh, uh, her gait was uh, slow almost, almost lasciviously so as she came towards me the smell in her room was more than just perfume, and it was lavish in the way that an ornate family tomb might be. She had a weary look uh, in her eyes as she saw me. Uh, so, you are back on... You're back on the society beat. I'm taking over, Nervous Steel now? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yes, I am, apparently. And you are back on the sauce, right? It's a good look on you. Well, it does keep me thin. And tonight I can use every ounce of strength that I can gather. So you know what happened to your husband? I heard. And have you heard what would, why this would happen? Or who would do this? Or what, which of his businesses might have driven somebody to do that? What are you implying? I'm not implying anything I'm asking, but now that you are so worried. Uh, do you have a name for our person now? She probably would address him by name. Okay, so we'll call that person Alex. Alex, my dear, she put her hand on my knee as we were sitting down. Alex. <laughs> I thought you were back on the society beat, and I, and give me 
just a few minutes to get myself prepared and I will be the saddest widow you ever photographed. <laughs> and I will give you all the quotes you need to make the morning papers. Or you're back on doing whatever investigation you think you're doing and we are done talking for now. I would like the widow quote. What? Can I have a name for your character? Uh, Lorelai Stevenson. Lorelai, okay. I will have the widow quote Lorelai. And I will take your picture. But I'm not done asking questions. And I think we can cut here, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I started this scene, didn't I? <laughs> yep. Sorry. I think I did, yeah, actually. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, yeah that's did. cool. This is cool. Yeah, this is perfect. Uh, yeah, excellent. Uh, so let's let's talk about where we are. Um, I'm not sure we got a new question out of this yet, except there's except maybe what exactly is the relationship between Lorelai and Alex? I'm not I'm not sure that rises to the question of I want my fifty cents back yet, but it could be. So maybe I'll just I'll stick that in there. And if we end up not liking it, we'll just cross it off. I think I would also like to know why doesn't she why isn't she grieving? Yeah, that's a good one. Cool. Uh, cool. So uh, I think it is Sabine's turn again. Ooh, wow. Yep. Again. Three people. Cool. It's gonna we're gonna go <laughs> fast. Um, so <laughs> as, as we're trying to get better at this. <laughs> um, remember, uh, we try. We're gonna try hard not to be too meta, and that means sometimes we're gonna be able to just have to grab the bull by the horns and say, like, "Well, I guess your name is Match." <laughs> that's the way this is gonna happen now. And you know, if that's a problem, we can always cut or X card something. Um, cool. but yeah. Uh, it, it, as we get into this a little bit more, it, the the flow of the narration should work a little bit better. Remember, you are always able to jump in just as long as you don't step on uh, what somebody is saying and you do not speak for someone else's role. So right now, Lorelai and Alex can only be spoken for by uh, Philip and Sabine, respectively. So if there's dialogue, you guys get to do it. Otherwise, uh, but the narration at the beginning of the scene is going to, that's whoever's turn it is. So, okay. Okay, so I've got to find a track. I think I'm going to go with Night on the... Yeah, Night on the Docks. I like that one. I left the Stevenson's house. Didn't learn anything of value. Not that I had expected to. Lorelai had sold out. Well, I knew other people who had sold out as well from Stevenson's businesses. And then I knew who had who had won things. Ooh. I had to go and ask Harris, but I couldn't. I wasn't running in that circles, those circles anymore. But I knew Harris's son, pretty useless drinker, smoker, always hanging around bars. So I'd go to, so I went to the Black Lagoon, like old times, looking for Pete, no, not Peter, looking for Eli Harris. What did I think, Peter? Huh? strange. I went in, the air was thick with smoke, with smoke and perfume. There was a singer at the bar, 
she distracted me for a moment. Pretty. But that's not what I was here for. So I went over to Eli, that little toad, and I chatted him up. Hey, Eli. Alex, my old friend. What you doing slumming down at the lagoon? I thought you were a high I thought you were a high class society reporter now. No. I'm just I'm just chasing a story. Oh, Steam Whatever did you do to get into such a low state? <laughs> well, your father had something to do with that. Eli as you may have for it. Or maybe Oh not. Peter always has such strong reactions to little things like what was it being called a deviant and having his fa face splashed all over the pages and white slavery allegation but you know i'm sure he'll forgive you eventually uh he should forgive himself oh he probably did that already but it was all true you know that but does he know that you told me a lot of these stuff these things Truth is a thing that we use to sell papers, Alex. Truth is whatever we can get printed on page one. Yes. You're not wrong, but I'm looking to change that, maybe. Do you know what happened to Stevenson? Your father stands to benefit from it a great deal. Why, which Stevenson, Peter O'Lorelei? There's Peter. an angle on both. Peter's dead. Oh, yes. Brutally murdered. I could see the blood drain from his face, and he nervously motioned to the bartender to give him another drink. Peter's dead. Well, glory be, I never thought... Well. Well, 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 our past does catch up to us, doesn't it? Sure does. I guess you're here to ask me what I know about all this, huh? You always were a clever boy, Eli. Well, if I were that type, I might tell you something about how he was supposed to be running around on Lorelei, but then you've been up to their mansion, haven't you, Alex? Bunch of yeah. times, as I, as I might have noticed. So maybe you don't, maybe you think that's not enough to cause somebody to go up and murder somebody. And of course, mm. you're asking no. me, so I guess you don't know anything, right, Alex? Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't ask you if I had a better idea. But I know who stands to benefit, as I've and told you. And, and I, I think you're and you're lying to me, Eli. You're trying to distract me. And... Well, you know something, and you know I'll find out eventually. So give it to me straight, and I'll pay for your drink. Oh well, <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I always do enjoy when I have a gentleman caller of your quality, Alex. And I know sure, I'm being yeah. ironic. Well, I mean, I could ask you if whether or not the last time you saw Lorelai had anything to do with this. But then that would be kissing and telling. My advice to you would be to go and... You know that Russian countess who owns herself that uh, nightclub on the west side? Oh, yes. Natasha? Well, she goes by Camille at the club, but yeah, her name's Natasha or something like that. Peter was into her for something. It seemed worse than money, but maybe it was just money. I mean, huh. it always ends up just being money, don't it? Money or love, you know, money or love. Well, now, if you have enough money, love usually follows, is my experience, Alex. Yeah, not always, you know, not always. 
It's such a romantic. Yes, I am, as you well know. You are too pure for this world, Alex. You better watch that. I shook my head at him, threw a bundle of 320 to the, onto the counter and motioned to the barman to fill Ilya's glass. I resisted my urge to stroke his face and left. I had a name, I had an address, and I had to talk to Natasha. And see. That was cool. Okay. So yeah. Uh, um, I've got a I've got a question. How do I use my checkbox card thingies? Because I wanted to, but I didn't want to break character. Uh here we go. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, I think if you had just checked it off at that point, we would have been like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing here. Uh, so. Yeah, I would have um, make the Eli is trying to distract me thing um, a truth. Cool, let's do that. Cool. So yeah, Eli, so Eli knew the truth, which probably seems to implicate that Natasha is involved somehow. Mm. Cool. Uh, did we get a question out of that? Besides the obvious, go and talk to Natasha. Okay, what was Peter into Natasha? For? Yeah, how is Natasha involved? That's that's good. Also, he was, who's Harris? Um, yeah. Okay, well, you know what? Actually, what, let's do it this way. Let's do this. So what I did is I crossed out the uh, mm -hmm. the how did he end up here, and we so we now know how he ended up here. But now the question is more like, well, why? What what did, how did Harris get involved in this in some way? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Philip, I guess it's your scene next. Yep. 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 Another nightclub, this one considerably more fancy than the Black Lagoon. The ladies here were beautiful in a way you don't see on every street corner. And the the and the clientele was also High class in a way that uh, they were nervous seeing a reporter around. My face was too familiar in their circles. But not only this gentleman recognized me, Natasha did as well. Um. Alex, Alex, mon cher. Whatever brings you down to my little petite boite? It is so long. Are you here to do another article for us about this? About our lovely place in the paper? Are you back on the high society beat, Alex? I heard Harris had uh, asked for you to be removed. Oh. I stared at her last time I saw Natasha. She was a real thin thing, fresh off the ship from Russia, I think, or maybe it was France. I can never remember. I heard she claimed she was a Russian countess. Well, who knows? There, are every Russian I meet in the city is either a countess or I don't know, a, revolu a revolutionary. My dear, I have questions. Oh, questions, Alex. Of course you're a reporter. But shall we, as they say, step into my office? 
It's so... How you say the noise is too high here. I followed her. Something was wrong. I had the feeling and tingling in the back of my neck. Maybe but I followed the... her anyway. But sorry. Oh, Maybe it was the two gorillas that stood outside the door <laughs> to your office. They were packing, I could tell. Her office was the kind of place that you might have seen the czars rent out if, when they needed to give the, give the place fumigated for the summer. The desk looked like it was taken out of the out of the hull of a out of a of a dreadnought. The paintings were all at least two hundred years old. The couch looked like you could hide a forest in it. I sat down in a chair. It was the most uncomfortable chair in the room, and it faced your desk. So, Alex, you have come to my place. What do you want? Why are you bothering me? You're not even on the beat anymore. You're on the crime beat. There has been a crime. Stevenson has been murdered. Brutally. People get murdered, and people get murdered brutally. It happens all the time. How is your this any of my business? Your name came up. Everybody always mentions my name. I'm famous, Starlink. Yes, but... You, you had business with Peter, I hear. Everyone has business with me, darling. You have business yeah. with me. Lorelei has business with me. Everyone has business with me. Everyone comes to my place. And it's such a lovely place. It must Lorelei be. has business with you. What kind of business has Lorelei with you? Lorelei? Oh, are, are you still interested in what happens with Lorelei? Why, Alex, such a romantic. Uh, you are a chevalier sans peur et, et, et sans. Uh, oh, how you say it? I don't speak Russian. Très bien. I was, aware, I was aware that wasn't Russian, but I don't speak French either. Well, entre nous, I don't speak it that much either. <laughs> But here in America, the rubes, they eat it up. Did Lorelai eat it up or Peter? Why, why you come down and you ask me about my private business, Alex? What are you going to give to me? I'm a businesswoman. It's expensive. Do you know how much politicians go for now? The economy, it's just too good. In the old days, 50 bucks would keep a ward healed sold for months but now they don't need they throw it back in your face i have a letter i found it on peter when he was lying dead on the ground i might show it to you we both know it's addressed to me it's been there alex so yes i think i think i should look at it yes i think you should tell me something if you want to look at it. Well, now, Alex. Natasha. What do you know about wills? Wills. Tell in your own words. Well, you know our darling Peter married so late in life. Oh. Laurel, I, of course, would be perfectly uh, within her rights to assume that any unfortunate accident that might happen to old, our dear Peter would leave her in possession of his fortune. Unless our dear Peter might have had a child, someone that he didn't tell anyone about. Maybe somebody from the war. Huh. If that child were to be found, why, that child would inherit everything. And our dear Lorelei would be out, well, she'd be back to wherever Peter found her. Sideshow, I believe. She was doing fortunes. Well... She figured out a good fortune then, I guess. Must mm -hmm. have turned over the King of Diamonds on the first try. 
Alex, Alex, this is an ugly business. Why would you want to write this up in your silly little newspaper? Can't you just report that he was found? It was obviously a mugging, a gangland execution of some sort. Can't I, I make the... that worth your while, Alex? No, you know me. I want the truth. Oh, Alex. I don't go for lies, Natasha. In 1919, the commissars informed me that truth was whatever Vladimir Ilyich said it was now. When I came to America, they told me that Vladimir Ilyich was a demon and truth was whatever, oh, which <laughs> one was it then? Herbert Hoover said. I have found that truth is basically priced. Sometimes reasonably, sometimes exorbitantly, but it always can be bought, Alex. I can be bought. And eventually the truth will come out. Well, if you price yourself off the market, Alex, somebody may try and close you out. I invite somebody to come and try. If this is a threat. Threat? No, 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 darling. I don't make threats. I have people for that. I will find out what happened here. I will find out where that child is, if there was a child, and what Lorelai had to do with everything. And what you have to do with everything. Well, then I hope it makes you happy, Alex, because it probably will make you hurt. <laughs> I think. Philip, we... Cool. Uh, Alright, why don't I do a scene, because I'll finish our cycle, then we'll take a break after that, I think. Cool. So, um, I'm going to just claim... Uh, do we have to do questions? Like, yeah. what's up with that child? Yeah, I think so. Uh, is there, did Peter have a kid? Whoops. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And maybe, some, and, and maybe someone should open that letter at one point. Yeah, actually, did, did Alex give Natasha the letter? I didn't narrate that. So, so I did, don't I think guess, so. I guess not. In how interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna put down that uh, Natasha seems to be our golden dreams right now, but yeah, you know, I can make <laughs> plenty of people my golden. I can make plenty of people work for me. So, <laughs> cool. Maybe Lorelai is your golden dream, and uh, uh, and Philip's character is that Willis child girl, maybe of Peter's. Maybe, though. I, at the way this is being set up, it looks like Lorelai is the person with the dark past who is uh, struggling to yeah. head of everything, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm for, this is still 40s noir, so uh, I'm afraid we can't do the uh, my sister, my daughter, my sister, <laughs> my daughter scene. <laughs> uh, Maybe the last one of these I'll run. I'll I'll turn off some of the haze coat stuff, and we'll see if we can do a little seventies neo noir. But for tonight, <laughs> let's do nineteen forties noir. So cool. Okie dokie. Uh, well, let me just play uh, the last track here. I caught a cab back to the paper. It was dark, all the way up to the building, one lone light burning. Probably my editor. Probably he was asleep, passed out or drunk. I got up to my desk. I stared down at the typewriter, stared at the coffee cup that had been that was still crusted with yesterday's coffee. I just looked at my hands and thought, how did it come to this? What had I done to get some so far? I just started to light a cigarette when I heard a bustle at the door and they came in. Two cops. 
followed by a guy in a cheap trench coat and the bad cigar smell that could only be a city detective. I expected them come, and here they were. They were coming straight for my desk and didn't even give me the courtesy of an introduction before they were leering over me, still sitting at the typewriter. So you're the guy who found him, the detective mumbled, not not uh, even bothering to take the cigar from his mouth. That's me, right, sorry. Yep. Um, sorry, can, can you say the last thing you said? I kind of spaced out here. So you're the one who found him? Who? Peterson. Peterson is a common name. He motioned and the uniformed policeman threw a, uh, threw a stack of my notes onto the floor. You have very clumsy policemen with you and you haven't even introduced yourself so who are you? What do you want? I told you what I want. An do answer to my question. And well, don't play dumb. Fine, I didn't find any Peterson. I might have found somebody named Stevenson. Uh. But, well, so please stop throwing around my stuff. How'd you like a trip downtown, Flatfoot? Said, uh, said one of the gorilla-like cops. He leered in my face. I smelled bad aftershave and cheap cigarettes. We are downtown. So, Kat, by so, the way, I just got confused with uh, Stevenson. He, he, he would have said Stevenson. He, okay. I just got, yeah, uh, yeah. In, okay, so let's cut that. Not looking at the notes, Peter Stevenson. Uh, yeah, no, that's yeah, right. We, okay. we can rewind that. That's yeah. fine. Sure. But. So, oh, you mean that, Stevenson? Only one who matters in this town. Yeah, you think so? Why? Doesn't the other people's name, Stevenson, matter? Aren't you with the police? Shouldn't every citizen matter? Or are you just coming out and saying, hey, I'm corrupt? Great. Can I take your picture? Alex, said the detective. He stubbed his cigar, his cigar out of my ashtray. He lit. He pulled another cheap one out of his coat pocket and offered me one. Alex, haven't we always been good to you? Haven't we always given you the tip? Now you're holding out on me. Alex, that ain't good for business, Alex. Mm. Come on, Westbrook. You come in here with these gorillas? And now you're telling now you want me now you want to tell me your friend that doesn't track. Gorillas? Those are officers of the law here for your protection. Oh wow, I'm feeling so protected. I look pointedly at my papers strewn across the floor by this gorilla like policeman. Maybe you shouldn't bring O'Rourke to such sensitive discussions then. If 
you want a friendly talk. Alex, be fair. We just want to know what you saw. We want to know if you found anything on the body. Where it is that it ain't exactly in the condition it must have been in when poor Stevenson caught it. Now, you wouldn't hold out on us, Alex, because we're all friends here. I thought for a second. Now, it's true that Westbrook had helped me out a couple of times, but he was strong-arming me, and I don't like that. I wouldn't give him anything. I didn't want that guy to bury the story because he would. Westbrook, I said, look, I didn't find anything on his body except blood, more blood, and a lot of wounds that didn't belong there. Alex, I have it on good authority that there was something taken. But I understand. You got to work your leads. You and I, we ain't so different. We got pressures from different people. Could give you 24 hours. At the end of the time, you better tell me what you want, and you damn well better believe I'm going to get the DA to sign out a material witness warrant on you. And that's bad for everybody's business, Alex. So chin up. It's not like you're in any trouble yet. Be good, kid. I need back. I wondered who was putting the pressure on Westbrook, or his boss, more likely. But I couldn't ask him, because he wouldn't tell me. I knew him. 24 hours should be enough. I had to read that letter. Oh, cut. Perfect. Uh, so why don't we come back on the hour? Uh, and uh, and uh, then we'll try and figure out some more of what's going on. Uh, we'll do the questions thing after we get back from break. So. Cool. All right. Okay. I'll see you all shortly. See yep. you Welcome back. Uh, so uh, we have so many questions right now. Um, mm -hmm. Let's take a look real quick and review them. Uh, well, it was Alex and Lorelai's relationship. Why isn't she sad? How is Natasha involved? Why did Harris get Alex demoted? What's up with Peter's chi child? And why is Natasha's name on the letter? Now, did we answer any of those yet? Nope. Let's take a look. Um, you know, why isn't she sad? <laughs> <laughs> well, he had affairs, she had affairs. I mean, it was kind of implied that she did. Yeah. So let's cross that out. Ooh, yeah. Freak. Uh, I mean, there's a definite implication that maybe she uh, was murdered, or maybe she was involved in the murder of mm -hmm. Peter to uh, prevent uh, getting cut out of the will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but that's yeah. something that Natasha put out there. Yes. So... We don't that, know that. Right. So I there's definitely definitely figuring out where that kid is, if the kid exists, is mm -hmm. important. And it does seem like somehow it would seem unsatisfying to me if somehow this wasn't all tied in with why uh Harris demoted Alex. Mm. But mm -hmm. we don't have anything linking that yet, but um and did we come up with any new questions? We know that Alex has a timeline. Um, and you know, it, someone's leaning on him, to, leaning on the d cops to get the letter. Yeah. The obvious candidate would be <laughs> Natasha, but it could be someone else. So yeah, maybe who's leaning on the cops? Because if it's someone um, else, that could be interesting. It could be Lorelai. It could be Harris. Well, it could be Harris. I think I'm thinking Harris maybe because he yeah. seems the kind of type who has uh, the, those kind of connections. So, did we establish that Harris is the editor, or is he like the publisher of the paper? I think Harris is the guy who is benefiting from Stevenson's death. Yeah. So I don't know if he has got anything to do with the newspaper, really. Okay, I wasn't sure, because we have a note about that, but I wasn't sure if that 
Was it? No, he I... could be. He, yeah, he could be the publisher. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So he's the paper's publisher. So that would he send the cops around? Maybe if he was trying to cover his own tracks. Ah, uh, I, I really see Harris more as the kind of crime kingpin guy, actually. Okay. Who was who was some kind of or, or some kind of business rival of of Stevenson's? Well, he could still own a newspaper. Sure, he could own it, but maybe not not work there or anything. He yeah, could yeah, own yeah, the newspaper. Definitely. Yeah. So he had to. So had the the power to get Alex demoted, but I think Eli said something that uh, because of white slavery article that um, Alex wrote. Yeah, with uh, with Harris's name all over the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe he's not involved with the paper then, because uh, mm. he would he could have just fired he could have killed the story before it came out unless yeah. unless oh, it was Alex's editor who got it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. or he did buy the paper uh, out of After. spite. After. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, I like that. And, and he didn't want to fire Alex because that would look bad, so he just demoted him. Also, Alex would probably find another newspaper to work for and smear him. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but this way, putting Alex into crime that uh, kind of... Well, would have put him out of the way of the high society guys, but it would still let him do stuff uh, that he actually kind of maybe liked. But mostly, he was he wasn't really reporting on any heavy crimes when he was there. That's what I'm guessing. Oh my god, I lost the group chat. Damn. Oh well. Okay. So, hmm. Okay, so yeah, it is your turn, Sabine. Okay. Ah, and, that's uh, right. I'm thinking. I want to talk. I want to see some more of more some more of Lorelai. I think. Yeah. Well, that is definitely one of our questions. Eek. So. After having read the letter, I decided I had to see Lorelei. So I went to my car and drove back to the house, to Stevenson's house. Maybe she was still awake. I arrived and it seemed there were still lights on. So I rang the bell. The butler let me in. I asked him if I could see, still see Lorelei, and he brought me to her. She now looked all like the grieving widow, a shroud covering half of her face, black clothes, a perfect image of uh, of grief and loss. The city seemed to accompany her. There was rain dripping against the glass pane window that was giving a great view about the center city skyline. Gray clouds hiding some of the high-rise buildings, like the shroud was hiding Lorelei's eyes. And like, and like with Lorelei, the weather was hiding a cruel heart. <laughs> cool. So you came back for one more quote, <laughs> Lorelei asked. I came back for a few questions I have. Lorelai, what about the ward, Peter, Peter's ward child? What about his testament? My God, you are direct. I am, you know me. We could dance all night and I would enjoy it, Lorelai, you know I would, but I'm on a time frame. Well, those certainly are rumors, whatever my 
late husband did in the war. But Alex, you know there, rumors aren't necessarily the truth. And I know you are after the truth. I am, but nobody will give it to me straight. Well, all I heard are rumors, so I can't, uh, but <laughs> he was in, uh, he was in France during the war. Mm. Met some, probably met some people there, women, of course. And? Well, there might be a child, but I'm not sure if it if it would know who his father was. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a uh, would be a very he, young child, though. Wouldn't indeed, it? indeed. War isn't over by far by a long time. I wonder, did you kill him? <laughs> she looked shocked. This might have been a question that was too direct even for us. <laughs> <laughs> she raised her hand and slapped me. I'd seen the shock in her eyes. It wasn't her. So you're innocent. Good. Then I can well, cross you off my list. So you have a list. Who else oh. is on there? I don't know if I should tell you. It's my husband. It was your husband. And you weren't as faithful. Well, it's you not very like faithful. you didn't contribute, and it is not like you cared for you for my vows back then. That's only too true. But you are a beautiful woman. God, you are so beautiful. I leaned over and kissed her. She kissed back. And I could taste the, yeah, I, I could taste uh, alcohol and something else on her lips. But I didn't care. Right now, I only cared about her. Peter was dead. This was not the right time. This was a catastroph catastrophically bad time. But still, she Might was so I beautiful. It might have been in bad taste, waking up in a dead man's bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we might be a little on the line with the his code there. Want to want to go this and try it yeah. a different way? Like maybe the camera yeah. swings over to the bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or or it might be in it might be in that bad taste. Leaving a dead man's house, leaving a dead man's house <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> leaving a dead man's <laughs> house and uh, le le leaving a woman's house the morning of her uh, after her husband uh, had been shot. Yeah, yeah, after her husband's death and uh, <sighs> I think that's cut, cut, cut. Okay, so I'm gonna cross off. Uh, what was Alex and Lorelai's relationship? <laughs> yep, that seems answered. Uh, we still don't know how Natasha was involved, or Harris. What's Harris's involvement, if any? And the kid, we don't know yet. Interesting. Cool. But I have, uh, I have, I have the idea that maybe Natasha picked up that kid. Yeah, I had a similar idea that she's definitely involved somehow with the kid. Mm, that's maybe what was in the letter. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Something about that kid. And maybe maybe Harris kind of got hold of the kid even, or... We will see. Uh, uh, I wonder if uh, off screen uh, Lorelei extracted uh, the list of suspects <sighs> from Alex. <laughs> yeah. Assuming yeah. they did exchange, exchange words during the night. Oh, oh which, you, which you can, it's your scene next, so you could actually do that as a narration. Like, when I got back to my apartment, I realized that the list was missing. <laughs> or yeah. that, that I had told, I realized that I had told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we can, we can yeah. do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. So, uh, as a reminder, let's try and um, use that list of questions to help us frame the scene so that we can tr start finding some more answers. Did mm -hmm. we get any new questions out of this? Um, I mean, we now know that Natasha didn't, uh, rather, uh, L Lorelai didn't kill uh, yeah. Peter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not with her hands, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, cool. Uh, uh, Philip, as soon as you're ready. Uh, cool. It was... The more it was already morning when I left driving my car back towards my place. I was tired. I've, I'd spent all night being awake. I was exhausted, and as other people, people of the day, were getting up, going to uh, to their going to their work, bringing the children to school, picking up bread. I was, I knew my body wanted to sleep. It was, I struggled to keep my eyes open as I was driving. And still, I hadn't finished any article that I could hand in at the newspaper. But the truth was more important than this. I wondered if I, sh if I would regret telling Lorelei about the other, other about my other suspects about Natasha about Harris I still didn't know who killed who killed Stevenson but maybe I should follow up with the... Maybe I should follow up with Harris or people close to him. When I got back to the apartment, the phone was already ringing. I picked it up and I heard that damn Russian accent again. Alex Starlink. How goes the gum showing? I was tired. Who was this? Who is this? I said. It's Natasha, darling. How are you? You forgot your accent, darling. It's late. Alex, my accent is how you say kaput. <laughs> Alex. What, what do you want? Well, Alex, have you found out anything? Are you going to give me my letter? Mm. No, the people interested in your letter. I could make it worth your while, Alex. You know I could. You know that you're going to need some protection, I think. From whom? Somebody killed Peter, didn't he? Didn't they? Yes. And I will find out who that was. How do you think Laura that looks for this? She seems very... She seems very appropriate to me. I mean, I know that you have feelings for her, but... Darling... I, I can find you someone else. My rates are reasonable. Orla is not a whore, Natasha. Huh. And it, 
and it wasn't her. I would find you a nice girl, Alex. Please. I don't want a nice girl. Natasha. That I can also handle. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Give me some uh, time. Give me some time, Natasha. Alex, I really think you should come down and see me tonight, tomorrow at the club. I think I will, actually. I've always enjoyed your shows. How are you and uh, Harris getting along these days? Mm, yeah, you know. I don't he, think he likes me for some reason. He was asking about you tonight, you know. Was he? Interesting. Oh, yes. I seem to think that you probably had a lot on your plate. Alex, are you in trouble? You know you're one of my best friends. I always help my friends. You want to still stay friends, don't you, Alex? <sighs> oh, Natasha, friends is such a complicated word. It doesn't have to be, Alex. It can be simple between us. Just give me the letter. I'll keep it safe. I've got the safe in the, in the club. It's wonderful. Hmm. I'll think about it. See you this evening. Make and sure you do, I, Alex. Or it might be I the last know. thing you don't do. Click. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, did we figure anything out here? Yeah, Natasha's trying to pressure um, Alex to do something. Yeah, Only Natasha for her wants the letter. Mm -hmm. So, I think the questions graduated from why is Natasha's name in the letter to why does Natasha want the letter? Mm -hmm. Play. You know what? I think what the audience is probably wondering right now is just like, what the heck is in the letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's we're true. Playing that coy. So that's definitely something mm -hmm. they want. Um, who's leaning on the cops? Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like it's Natasha. So I'm going to mm -hmm. guess it's Harris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. We still and Harris, mm -hmm. Harris was leaning on Natasha too, right? Um, yeah, I got that feeling. Yeah. Or at least, yeah. I don't know if we know. Well, we don't really know how Natasha is involved yet exactly. I don't think we've got a clarifying question on this yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so did we get any? So I guess we got a new question out of this. Any other questions you think? No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess it's my turn, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. It felt like my head had just hit the pillow when the phone rang again. When I looked at the clock, four hours had gone by. Just enough sleep to be exhausted. I picked it up, and of course, it was, a, it was a voice I didn't want to hear. Eli. Alex, old friend. I just met the most interesting person tonight. He really wants to meet you. Hey. Eli, good. Whatever it is. Day? Morning? Oh, I don't know, darling. I try never to be out at this hour. I think it's day. What kind of person, Eli? Kind of person who's feeling awful guilty right now, Alex. Kind of person who might, uh, who might be able to tell you who left Peter so brutally beaten behind that dumpster. You're, uh, treasure of information. What's in it for you? Oh, a chance to get back at Peter a little bit, I think. Wasn't right what he did to you, Alex. You were only telling the truth. Well, the truth that we can sell. Sorry? Um, I thought it was Harris who... 
Isn't Eli yeah. Harris's kid? Yeah, but he said uh, to get back at Peter. Uh, no, Peter. Sorry, father. Oh, okay. Sorry. Cool. He's okay. in a little, uh, you know, yeah, okay. Thing. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, you know, dear old dad is, uh, had it in for me for a long time. I thought I would return the favor. You're a bit too flamboyant for his tastes, I think. Well, we can't all live up to what our fathers want us to be, can we, Alex? I remember my father. He sure didn't expect me to become a reporter, or this kind of reporter. Hmm. I nod, realize that Eli can't see it, couldn't see it, and said, yeah, so where should I meet this, this person? Well, he just doesn't want to do it anywhere except in public. It seems he's a little afraid. That's pretty wise. I suppose we should just meet down at Union Station, don't you think? Sure, why not? When? Oh, I was hoping to get my beauty sleep. But shall we say 11? 11. I, I think I can make that. I see that you do. You sure wouldn't want to be late. Not Not late like poor Peter was, at least. <laughs> See you then. Click. Cut. Yeah. Cut. Okay. Um, so I was definitely going for who killed Peter. Yeah. So, good job, Eli. Yeah, I like Eli. I think he he killed Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Pete. Oh poor Eli. We're we're yeah. just walking right up to the Hayes code and spitting over the line with Eli. <laughs> <laughs> a little. He's, he's, he's artistic. Very artistic, that's all. <laughs> I, I kind of like him. But he could totally be the murderer. I mean, Peter isn't, oh, sure. pr Peter isn't a prince. So. Uh, cool. Actually, do we want to... We haven't seen it on screen, so I feel bad about like crossing that off. But I really do like the idea that Eli was the murderer. <laughs> Yeah, kind of do. Philip, what do you think? Sure, we can. We can decide he's the murderer. All right, I like that idea. Yeah. Cool. Hey, we're down to four questions, but they're interesting questions. Any new questions come out? Why suppose, did? He, yeah. Why? Why uh, did he kill Peter? I think we already know why Harris got Alex demoted, didn't we? Don't we? Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, we didn't answer it on screen exactly, but uh, yeah, we yeah, yeah we had the white slavery thing. Eli said the whole white slavery thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's the reason. Which could okay. tie into this whole uh, what's up with Peter's mm -hmm. child thing. So. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, we're cooking now. Mm-hmm. Just need to wheel the fog machine out, and we got ourselves a film noir. <laughs> I don't have a fog machine, but, um, well. Well, it's muggy tonight here in New York, so that okay. counts. Okay. Uh, okay. So cool. Uh, it's your turn, I believe, Sabine. I walked up to Union Station. It was busy at that time of day, of course. Lots of ant-like people crawling over the station was there were trains coming and going and worker bees were cramming themselves into mothers with children most of them crying lots of puddles of rain and maybe mother stuff everybody was smoking so it was kind of almost foggy inside the great hall i was suspicious but I had to know what Eli knew or his source. So I went up to the newspaper stand and was waiting around for him 
or a source to show his face. I was waiting for a while. The clock st struck 11. And I looked around for people coming towards me. Alex. I was surprised I hadn't heard him creep up to me like that. Eli. He looked nervous. He was smoking more than he used to, which was saying something. Besides making me want to buy stock and Philip Morris. <laughs> it keyed to me that he was upset about something. He flinched at the first train whistle ringing through the great hall. His eyes darting towards an uniformed uh, railway worker, <laughs> maybe suspecting he was a cop. Mm. You understand, Alex. I never, I would not have had the circumstances not been, well, what do you want to know? I'll tell you. It doesn't matter now. What, Eli? You said somebody wanted to meet me. Yeah, I said I knew who killed poor Peter. Well, he's okay. here, Alex. He's here. I didn't... Uh I, it took me a while to understand what he was saying. Eli? Eli had killed Peter Stevenson? You understand, I didn't leave him that way, not the way you found him. What happened between the two of you, Eli? Why did you kill him? Oh, well, Peter wasn't such a nice person, you know. Father told me stories, but of course, father's not very nice either. I suppose I could spin you up some fairy tale about how I was trying to be a, a white knight riding in on my horse to save Lorelei. That girl Hello. deserves better than what she's going to get. Yeah, but killing Peter for Lorelai, you never cared much about her. Well, she's not really my kind of girl, but, well, what, what Dad was going to do to them both wasn't right. The only way to save one of them is to make sure that she got the will through probate before it was too late, you understand. Anyway, it wasn't it wasn't all my idea. You have to understand that he stopped suddenly. The newspaper man had ducked behind the counter. And coming at a run were two cops followed by Westbrook. I grabbed Eli. I have to go now. And I hustled right. him back towards uh, the, the exit. How did they know I was here? Did you sell me out, Alex? I didn't sell you out. Shut up and move. Actually, I think I think this is a contest. Ooh. Are they going to get away? Is Eli going to get away or uh, not? So, Philip, your call here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think Eli is uh, getting away. Uh, do I narrate uh, now how he how he gets away, or is this one of your uh, jobs? Uh, if you've got an idea, jump right in. So, I was uh, pushing Eli. To the hassle of the 
of the of the train platform. The and I put the and just before the train the train was leaving, I pushed him. He grabbed uh, onto onto the door. A, f a friendly stranger helped him into it, and uh, as the train was speeding away, Westbrook was catching up with me. One of his uh, policemen put his arm on my shoulder, and Westbrook said, Alex, we need you to come with us. Cool. That was my scene, right? So we'll cut. All right. Okay, so why did Eli kill Peter? To protect Lorelei. New question. <laughs> why was Eli protecting Lorelei? Well, he said something about his father, who was going to do something terrible to right. them both, probably Lorelei and Peter, and he had to kill Peter to make sure Lorelei got the money. But what did Harris plan to do? All right. What did Harris do to Peter? What was Harris going to do to Peter and Lorelai? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Take it away, Philip, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless we got any other questions. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have questions, so we can. They kept me in a small room for hours, asking question after question, all of them directed at Lorelei and who she was. They seemed to suspect me of being an accomplice. And just as I was leaving the police station, I saw Lorelei being let out of a big black police car in handcuffs, a policeman guiding her by the arm. Again, the, the flashlights of a uh, uh, photo, uh, photo cameras were flashing new fodder for the front pages. Can we uh, have them? Yeah. Go on. Ah, I turned around, confronting those policemen. What do you think you are doing with that lady? Westbrook jammed his face in mine. Hey! You don't get to ask the questions here, Alex. You had your chance to help us. Yeah, unless you got something to tell us about Lorelai Peterson. I think you best just move on and go write your next story about a mugger on the train. I've got to tell you something about Lorelai Peterson. She's innocent. Innocent of what? I don't know what you want from her, but I can tell you that she had, did not murder her husband. Listen. Listen, Alex. You don't know what you're messing with here. I've got people telling me to keep you out of the way. For your own protection. I guess people just like you. It's not my fault if they're cutting loose on Lorelei. It's just gotten too big. It's... You can't handle this anymore, Alex. You don't want to go up and, well, what are they going to demote you to next time? Dog catcher beat? I don't care what they demote me to. I won't. And I turned and shouted at Lorelai, Lorelai, don't give up. I'm, I will set you, I will help you. I will find out the truth. I know you didn't do this. Lorelai was looking at me 
was desperation in her eyes. She was very afraid of entering this police station. Who knew if she would ever leave it again as a free woman? I felt terrible for her. And I decided that whatever was going to happen, they wouldn't keep her. And whoever was behind this, I would splash his name around across every front page of every paper in this whole city. And if that meant working classifieds for the rest of my life, it would be worth it. Oh, you're seen, dude. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um sorry. I I I think yeah. My eyes followed uh Lorelei. Even if there was fear in her eyes, her walk was still upright and proud as she proud as she was led up the stairs into the police station and seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I guess whatever Harris was going to do to Lorelai and um, Peter, he's trying to do it now. Yep. I think it's time I do some maintenance here. It's pretty clear that Harris is Golden Dreams. Yeah. 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 Natasha may also be Golden Dreams, but she's like doing some. She's doing her own side thing on this. Uh, I'm gonna claim Westbrook because it's been pretty clear he's been working for Harris for a while oh. now. Yes, totally. So I'm just going to claim that. I think what I'll do just to cover my butt is I'll claim, I'm going to claim Natasha as also mm -hmm. sort of working for him, but let's put him down. Yep. Is Harris still with uh, Lorelei in the, at this point? Harris, no, no. Harris isn't with Lorelei. Or was he? Was he involved with her? Oh, yes, we, we said that, right? That they uh, could yeah. do kind of thing. Yeah, the, the wizard are against. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not checked anymore. Cool. All right, so I have put uh, Bayard, Nathan DeVree, Harris, newspaper publisher, up on here. What was Harris going to do to Peter and Lorelai? We still don't know. What was in the letter? We still don't know. Mm -hmm. How is Natasha involved? Uh, that's an interesting question. She seems to have been running her own game yeah, inside think, Harris's scheme. I think uh, Natasha is involved with the whole uh, Peter's child scheme, and maybe that's what was in the later letter. Yeah, maybe she is doing some human trafficking stuff with all the... Yeah, yeah that could uh, work. Uh, also, uh, maybe because it was a letter addressed at Natasha, the next scene could be Alex confronting her because she's the yeah. the most exposed uh, member of the Harris uh, organization that he has yeah. access to. Yeah, and she wanted to talk to him anyway, so I guess that's. Yep. Uh, I think it's my scene anyway, right? Right. It is. Oh. Cool. Oh. All right. Let me uh, find a jazz track here. Yeah, this is good. Is really anything quite as sad as a nightclub in the middle of the day? All the chairs were piled up on the tables. The tablecloths had been pulled down. The laundry was stuffed into inside a big laundry cart in the middle of the ballroom floor. Instead of, uh, instead of the hottest jazz band in town, there was just a single clarinet player running up scales. The Mayor D looked like he had slugged it out for a couple of years on the Eastern Front with the Nazis. He led me into the back room. Natasha was wearing some kind of caftan, I guess they call it. She's leaning back at the desk, smoking cigarettes out of a long holder and going over her books. 
It was a bottle of scotch that looked like it had gone a heavy workout during the morning next to her. <laughs> she looked up at me and grinned that sort of predatory grin I'd seen the only that I'd seen on a shark back when my uh, back when my PT boat got nailed by the Japanese. Why, Alex? I'm so glad you made it down in time, darling. It's so my it is so such a good time for us to have that talk, don't you think, darling? I slammed my fist on on the desk. They arrested Lorelai. You know it wasn't her. What's wasn't going her. on, Natasha? I'm I know you sure murdered Stevenson. The murder? Well, maybe she didn't do this, darling, but sure she did something. I have this letter here, and it talk. And in in this letter to you, Peter talks about his child, and that you were supposed to keep her safe. What did you do with the girl? Where is she? Well, Alex, I take my responsibilities very seriously. If I say I'm going to keep someone safe, I keep them safe. Unless, of course, Alex, darling, they don't play ball with me. They don't play ball with you? This is about a little child and about Lorelai's life. This is about you, Alex. Why is this about me? What has this got to do with me? Because you're screwing the whole thing up, Alex. You're Coming sorry. around, like, acting like you're a crime reporter instead of a second-rate chaser after millionaires' affairs. Go back to laundering people's underwear in public, Alex. It's safer. I don't care for safety. You know I've left safety behind when I exposed Harris's deal with these, those girls. Well, I didn't know you were involved in that, but I can't believe it. We all do things, Alex, that we are not always proud of. I came here with nothing. A forged Bulgarian passport and five bucks that a guy had given me for a cigarette on the boat and a little comfort from home. I speak sad languages. I studied at the Ecole Francaise. But you think that gets me anything in this country? No. What gets me things in this country is being tough and being willing to do the things that these rich Americans don't want to do, but they won't have done for them. Alex, I found the girl. Peter was distraught. He thought she'd been killed. He thought the, that she'd been dragged away at the end of the war by the Germans. I found her. I found her. She was fine. She'd gotten on a tramp steamer out of Marseille and she was living in Tunisia. It would have been a bad situation for her, but fortunately, through my dealings with Harris, I had certain contacts in that world. This is a disgusting world, Alex. It is far darker than anything you've ever reported on. So I got her out and I am keeping her safe. Harris. Well, Harris. He wants a lot of things. And he's going to let Lorelai hang. Because, you know, they worked the whole thing up together. She wanted the money and didn't want Peter to get the girl. Peter wanted the girl. I found the girl. Harris doesn't want me to get the girl. To... Harris wants me to get the girl so that he can inherit the money too. Lorelai wanted Peter out of the way and didn't want the girl. All I want is for the girl to be all right. If she's rich, she's rich. If she's not rich, she's still in America. You can understand, Alex. I sat back. I poured myself some of that whiskey from that used bottle. I took a deep drink. That is a sordid story. Oh. I shall. It will sell papers, though, won't it? How does Eli tie into this? Oh, poor Eli. Eli wanted to do the right thing. He wanted to help his father. He wants to help. Lo he wants to hurt his father and help Lorelai. Also, I think he was sweet on the girl somehow. Not like an uncle. Hmm. 
He wanted the best for her and for Lorelai. He thought somehow he could convince Peter to make all that happen. Peter wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. Things got out of hand. You know Eli has carried a gun ever since he moved out of his father's place. He says it's for his own protection. You and I both know who he's protecting himself from. Does it? Is it getting more sordid for you now, Alex? Or what? What do you think? Do you have enough to sell enough papers so that you can get back to riding around in limousines with starlets? I think that would feel very hollow right now. But I still think I want that girl to be safe, and I want Lorelai to be safe because she didn't murder murder her husband. And I don't think Harris should get his dirty fingers on that money. I mean, it's dirty as it is, but, you know. Well, Alex, you seem to be up against the wall here. As I see it, you can help the girl, or you can help Lorelai. Helping both? Well, Cher, I think that is a little bit too much even for you. You know, I've never really taken give up or no for an answer. Not even when I was a high society reporter. That's why I was so damn good. And that's why I fell from grace. They told me I couldn't print that story about that, what happened to that girl. They said nobody will care, but turn out they did care. And I lost my job, but Harris lost a good chunk of business that day. Why, well, Alex? I suppose it would help me if Harris was no longer looming like a dark shadow of everything I've tried to build. So I wish you luck. If you take him down, I'll pick up the pieces, and maybe I'll even be able to save you. But I'd be very frightened right now, Alex. The, he owns the cops. The honest, he owns me. I knew that was the truth when she said it. But I think that woman didn't like to be owned. Neither did I. So I would have to make think up a plan to take down Harris and save the girl and Lorelai. Without the cops, without anyone to help me but this woman over there. And, oh, it's your scene. That, that feels like cut. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually getting pretty close to mm -hmm. having only one, having no questions left. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that work? Uh, well, when we have no other questions left, we have one last scene, and we mm -hmm. try and wrap everything up. Cool. Um, so how is Natasha involved? It looks like she was playing all sides against the middle, trying to protect the girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's up with Peter's kid? All right, we know that. She was, that was what Natasha did. The heck is in the letter was the fact that the kid was safe and maybe that she had him hidden or her hidden. Mm -hmm. And what was Harris going to do to Peter and Lorelai? Somehow he was going to get Peter's money, it looks like. I think he maybe was angling towards adopting the girl or something like that. Yeah, me. Oh, yeah, that's probably what it was. And yep. just gonna cut, cut, uh, try and cut Lorelai in and just pay her to go away, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or it was his uh, plan all along to frame her for uh, the murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I mm -hmm. mean, I unchecked my silver tongue thing. So, uh, you may have noticed, though, that I did check off that last box mm -hmm. because Lorelai was working for Harris. Yeah. At the start. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have sorrowful news for, for, for our angelic reporter and our poor silver tongue. Uh, that means that silver tongue is guilty of a crime and must be punished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so does mm -hmm. Harris. Mm hmm. Um, so. Uh, cool. I guess uh, it is. It's your turn, Sabine. That seems to 
Yeah. Uh, Wind everything up nicely, right? Yeah. Can I suggest something that should probably happen? Sure. Uh, cool. We always had uh, Alex deny that he can be bought and uh, being all high principles. I think Harris should uh, offer offer him something like trying to buy him maybe uh you know he also gets the train tickets to california where he uh can report on stars in hollywood and forget <laughs> all about central city or something like that uh -huh. there's no question there needs to be a confrontation between harris yeah. and alex at this point and that's got to be the final scene going up okay. to the mountain you know the the big penthouse apartment that harris stays in yeah. Um, final scene. Does that mean that my scene would be the final scene, or do we have a, another round of scenes? Uh, I. It should be the final scene. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're gonna yeah. wrap this all up, punish everybody, and. Uh, okay, punish yeah. everybody. Then, yeah. Um, Everybody's gotta get pun all the guilty must be punished. <laughs> yeah. Do, do we go penthouse suite or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's up to Savine where where to, where to set it. No, it's totally penthouse sweet. Uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, because I was thinking maybe we go back to the newspaper and uh, have the confrontation there. That's uh, it's good maybe we have the uh, confrontation in the penthouse suite of the newspaper. Oh. I like the uh, like the C suite, the, the executive suite up on the top yes. of the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, either either that or the printing press are the two good newspaper set piece locations. Ooh. Ooh, somebody could fall into the printing press. Nice. Oh, that could be good. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I got to think how I'm going to play Harris. This should be fun. Yay, cool. So I think for some reason, Laurel, I should be there. Oh, I have an idea. Cool. Um, oh, I've got to play my track. I had gone back to the police station and learned that Lorelei had walked free with Bayard Har together with Bayard Harris. Where had they gone? What was going on? Was she working with him still? Where was the girl? I went back to the newspaper. I wanted to type something up. That's when I saw the black limousine with the vanity plates, Harris, in front of the newspaper. I knew he was there. If he was there, then probably Dorlai was there too. So I asked our, the person at the entrance. And he told me that they had gone up to the seventh floor. That's where the printing presses were. What were they doing? The whole thing made me nervous and I worried about Lorelei, even though she probably was involved in the crime. I took the elevator up, and when I arrived at the printing press, I could hear shouting. Harris was shouting at Lorelei. Harris was wearing evening clothes, tight fitting tux that barely covered his protruding belly. His hair was slicked back. He smelled a pomade. He was staring and jabbing a finger in Lorelai's face. No, we agreed on this, Missy. We all knew this was a consequence. I will send you my lawyers, and you will come out of this all right. You'll do a little time. You've done it before. It's not a big thing. You're going to be well paid. We're all going to be well paid. Well paid this time. This time it's murder. I, it won't be a little time. I, you can't trick me like this. And Lorelai was gesturing at the newspapers uh, flickering by on the printing press, the headline, repeating her statement, murder, and showing her face and her in handcuffs. My dear, they say a district attorney in this country could indict a ham sandwich. I could get the bread to do five to ten in the court of public opinion. Now, you don't think I can make this look like you getting framed by some 
he turned to me and stared. But some nosy reporter who got too big for his britches. Hello, Alex. Oh, Bernard. Still the same scumbag I remember. You never learn. Crime doesn't pay. Well, now, that all depends on the crime, the criminal, and how much we're talking about. <laughs> Alex, I gotta say, you look good for this. We all know you had an affair with Lorelai. We all know that you've been spending so much time with good old Natasha. She's such a sweetheart, don't you agree? Alex, you're in over your head. Boy, quit with your head. Just walk away, <laughs> Alex. Walk away. I know what you're trying to do, Bayard. And you know, right now, there are several things in your way. And one of them is me. But Alex, we don't have to play it like this. How'd oh. you like to write for the Los Angeles Daily Mirror? It's just a call for me. And you'll be getting back your column. Movie stars, Alex. Movie stars. You can leave all this sordidness behind and go out and have some clean living in the sunshine. Maybe get yourself a nice house with some orange groves. Doesn't that sound nice, Alex? That indeed so did sound nice. The sunshine on my face, I thought. Clean blue sea, white beach. Somewhere to relax, to forget the battles. For a second there, yes, I was tempted. I could convince him to let Lorelei come with me. We could live there carefree. And then I thought of that little girl, Peter's little girl. Hadn't she been through enough? I couldn't get, I couldn't leave her for Harris. And I remember what I said to Natasha. I sighed. No, by art, I don't know. I get sunstroke pretty quick. So that's probably, California is not for me, probably. Alex. Well, you see, my friend, most people don't have to find out that in the right circumstances, a man is capable of almost anything. I was in the war. Bayard. Remember, I know what a man is capable of. Mm. Well, I always was afraid that if my son went to war, I'd lose him in the fighting. Well, anyway. I lost my son anyway. Mm. It didn't get very far, you know. Not very far at all. Did you kill him? Did you kill your own son? Or did you send someone, whatever you want to call it, by yard? Oh no, it was the Mexican police. Killed him. After all, he was a wanted fugitive. You make me sick. You will never get that girl. Well now, Miss Laura, I, I think you have something to say on this matter, don't you? Tell your friend to just fly on home now, Lorelai. <laughs> we can't. We all can get uh, out of this alive, Alex. We we could go to California. I was sad that she said that to me. I would have fought for her if she had decided to stay honest but this way she was willing just to just to give up to leave Harris do his stuff no I couldn't do that shook my head sadly and said no Lorelai I will not let this go Stevenson wasn't a good man but he didn't deserve to be murdered and left behind a dumpster and this person, scumbag here, he doesn't deserve whatever he's got. 
Oh, Alex. I am so sorry to hear you say that. Detective. Oh, detective. <laughs> Westbrook came out. He was holding his snub nose 38 casually. Mm. His hat pushed back on his head. Alex. I gotta take you in now. You know that. You've heard what he said, Westbrook. Didn't you once swear to uphold the law, to protect the people, to serve the people? Wasn't that what you did? And what are you doing now? You're just a, you're just a dog for hire for that man. It ain't, it ain't that simple, Alex. You always want it to be simple, but it ain't simple. You can be. Just do your fucking... No, sorry. <laughs> Just do your darned job. For once in your life, do the right thing. Alex, just for once in your life, you do the right thing. There are a lot of lives riding on, on this decision. The truth ain't worth this, uh, uh, Lorelai said, and I knew where she had came from and uh, why she wouldn't want to fall back into that obscurity, the riding, <laughs> the roving lifestyle of a, of a carnival worker, tell telling fortunes for pennies on uh, dirty roadsides. <laughs> For her, this is this luxury, this fame that put her on this new, put her on the front pages in the first place was all she had. But she was on the front page in handcuffs. It didn't track. I couldn't do it. I understood where she was coming from. Maybe even I, I even understood where Westbrook was coming from. I couldn't. There was no way I could let Harris do this. I could let Harris go on. He'd gotten away with far too much. So I turned to Westbrook and said, what do you want? Do you really want to shoot me? Are you serious? I'm unarmed. And I'm fighting for the right thing here. Alex, you know, you know what? You know that I want to do the right thing here. But what am I going to do? You, you, you want me to be the only honest cop in the department? Well, it's kind of a start, isn't it? Maybe it's catching. You're not a bad man, Westbrook, but if you shoot me now, you will be. You know where that girl is? I can find. I know where, how how to find her. I said. Uh, I'm thinking of Natasha. I'm gonna regret this in the morning. Lorelai Stevenson, Bayard Harris, you're under arrest for conspiracy to commit murder. <laughs> cool. Is this a conflict with? Uh, is this going to be a conflict for uh, Lorelai? Because you know, right now you can win all conflicts. <laughs> yeah, but how do we end it as yeah. uh, her being punished? If oh, yeah, this is actually something Simon's commented on that uh, usually that ends up with Nerves of Steel's player, ha um, rather Silver Tongue's player, has to decide voluntarily. To, to take the rap, and it's kind of tragic. How do you want it to? Go, how do you want to go out, though? Because that's how you you can say it. I mean, you could still draw your gun and threaten everyone, and then um, uh, when you are running away, you're on the run. You will be on the run, which is also which is being punished because you won't have your money or anything. But you would be on the run. I could see the. I could see the conflict in Lorelai's eyes. For a moment, she was reconsidering her options. 
her. She was looking at the newspaper rattling by and then made a decision, stepping forward and putting out her hands. And tur she turned her head at me and said, if you're writing the truth, Alex, at least write it well. And <laughs> make, sure it's a make sure I get a good picture and write a tragic. Okay. So I think. I'll wait. I think he will. Uh, no, I, I uh, turn to, towards her, and I said, "It's gonna be the best. Um, it's gonna be the best story I've ever written, nor alive. And if you cooperate with the DA, you will be out, and I will be waiting. And I think then we can cut, right? I think so. The uh, stuff uh, dreams are made of. Cool. Very nice. That was very nice. Um, we have a little extra time. Uh, would you mind just doing a short debrief here so we can sure. talk about it on camera? Um, sure thing. Yeah. Uh, so what did you guys think? I thought that that kind of worked out pretty nice. That was a good little film noir movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't. It, um, by the narration style, it didn't feel as much as a movie. Uh, you you can't bring all the uh, film tropes. Uh, as far as, uh, as uh, descriptions and lighting and stuff like that goes, because you are always in the first person perspective, so it's more it it feels more like a like a novel than a, than a noir movie in the way it's uh, the description works. Yeah, uh, yeah. Simon actually talks about that in the uh, text that uh, he deliberately wanted to use the the language of of hard boiled fiction mm -hmm. in lieu of doing the movie techniques. Uh you can make a case for either. Um I agree. Uh there there would be a different way to phrase it if we were doing it as a strictly kind of camera operating film noir. I I think on the plus side the the first person narration really does kind of pull the story in and make it like flow together. Um and it's just weird and it's kind of neat and weird uh, yeah. in its own way. But it, it's def that is definitely a thing, and I, I think, I think if you're like really steeped in the kind in this kind of writing, I've read a, I've read a lot of these kinds of books. Uh, it's a little easier to make it more cinematic, maybe. Yeah, I I, I, I would have had to reread a few of them in preparation if I had to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to to get to get into the language, especially the the English phrasing and the flow of the of the whole thing, because I'm I don't have that uh, presence to uh, you know you <laughs> get get into the flow uh, super easily. But uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I well, I think both of you uh, did extremely well for yeah. English L two, so um, <laughs> uh, fantastic. Uh, I like the, the jazz tracks. That really got me into this rhythm. That uh, yeah. uh, every time the jazz track started playing, I could feel. I, I think that was very cinematic because I could feel kind of like this dark street and it was wet and dark and cold a bit, and then I would have to talk. And that's nice. That was nice. It was. Cool. It's a cool game. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm glad I came across this. It's. It's yeah. a neat little thing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and I will say this: the mystery technique works really well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean it's helped because it's film noir, uh, and so <laughs> which is a genre that's notorious for not exactly having everything make sense exactly. Yeah. But um, but I think I think the thing that makes that really work well is that uh, it, it has to be framed from an audience point of view, and that kind of helps. Right, because if you if you like let yourself start thinking, well, what would Alex think is an important question here. It's not gonna it it wouldn't have worked as well. Mm -hmm. I think forcing us to take that step back and be meta there helped a lot. By the way, I really liked your choice to do in a reporter here. That was a nice that was a nice little change up, um, and I thought that worked really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. You you uh, you gave it as an example uh, at the beginning that uh, the 
the protagonist could be a reporter. And I thought, oh, okay, I can be a detective. I've been a detective pretty often, actually, uh, or a policeman, which I wasn't really interested in. So I thought, I'm a reporter, I like that one. I think I played this once where a guy had it as a, basically an insurance investigator. Which is yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, what is that? Double indemnity. Yep, uh, double indemnity. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we played fast and loose with Alex's gender, though. I think in the end, I I, I think I just blundered into calling him he. But sorry yeah. about that. Was, uh, that was that was pretty much cleared up when you said that he was in the in the military, because uh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I should have. Yeah, don't think any there were any women in the, in the military at that point in the American army. Mm -hmm. uh, not not in combat, no. Not in combat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alex could have been a nurse that fell off a ship, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, uh, it's it's fine. I'm I'm totally cool with Alex being a guy. Yeah. I actually wanted to keep it open because I wasn't really sure if I wanted Alex to be a guy or a gal. Yeah, I, I was a little more conscious of that in the first half, so I was uh, trying to leave that open. Um, cool. I had a lot of fun with uh, Natasha. She was fun. Yeah. Uh, and Lorelai was fun, too. Uh, yeah. Poor Lorelai. She, yeah. she was a very innocent silver tongue. That was pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. she. Yeah, but she picked fame in the end. Yeah, that was great. That was a great choice. I hope you didn't mind that I I I, I used that to pull you in by just I, part of that was just like this will make it a little easier to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it worked. So, um, and it was good good to have her uh, on screen in the uh, in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was wondering how to pull all three characters into the final scene, but I guess that that worked pretty well. I guess. I guess in the end, Natasha ended up winning, huh? Yeah, well, how do you think so? Crime doesn't pay, my dear. Well, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yep, she, I'm sure she'll go down for something terrible in the end. I find, she her, I find her dark secrets. I mean, she's, she's trafficking in human beings, so we all go back to that. Yeah, she's not a nice person. No. Oh, She's sympathetic, oh. not nice. <laughs> yeah, Alex was uh, a very, uh, yeah, uh, a very pure uh, noir protagonist too. He he wasn't that pure. He was. He just was principled. Yeah. Yep. He was. Yeah. He was definitely the crusading reporter stereotype. Yeah. Except yeah. coming off the society beat, which was kind of hysterical. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe he learned something. Maybe that's what turned him around, actually, the whole Harris story. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, cool. Uh, so I had a great time playing with you guys tonight. That was fun. I don't remember if people are signed up for this again. Uh, we're going to do it again in two weeks. And then maybe for the third one, I'll take out some of the optional rules that I've not play tested. I wrote, I wrote them to Simon in an email. I'm like, here's what I think. I'd like to try and do this with later noir. I've not tested these rules, but let's give them a shot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, cool. But this is great. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and yeah. uh, let's do it. I'd love to have I... both of you at the table again someday. I keep oh, thinking yeah. I'm going to try and do some more Euro friendly times. <laughs> yeah. um, that would be nice because it's, uh, just, uh, this, that, this is a holiday, it's kind of exceptional. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it so much, both of you yeah. staying up so late. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for facilitating. I think I said that, but I'm saying it again. No, no, it's very good. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the gauntlet.